Hey everyone, this is Mike that coming at you from the New York Comic Con 2013. And today I'm joined with David from Carbine Studios and we're going to talk about Wildstar. Hey man, it's really great to be here. I'm the uh, senior community manager for Wildstar, uh, working at Carbine Studios. All right, awesome, awesome. Well, basically, we're going to just uh, check out the game, we're going to check out the new uh, Chow race, and we're just going to get your questions answered. All right, let's get to it. Uh, Queen Vu asks, uh, Wildstar is an action MMO. How will they? How will you eliminate the advantage given by lag-free connections for players? Well, our network guys are working really hard during beta to get all of the data they need to do. We've been doing a ton of stress tests lately um, to make sure. Whoa! I just stepped on a landmine. <laughs> to make sure that we've got all the stuff we need to make sure that everyone's experience playing the game is as smooth as possible. We want to minimize lag, of course. I mean, that's always the goal. And we want to make sure that everyone who's playing the game enjoys playing the game and doesn't have that much lag. But we've also, in beta, had a lot of people playing uh, on the U.S. servers from Europe, and they see a little bit of lag. They see maybe, you know, 100 milliseconds or something, but they're not really at a disadvantage at all because of the way the combat actually plays out. Um, because of the telegraphs, because a lot of your abilities have charge-up times, there's still enough reaction that you can do in PvP to not really have to worry about that very much. All right, cool, cool. Okay, so um, will the game disclose all combat formulas and mechanics so that players can test them independently via a combat log? Yes, absolutely. We're being very open with the combat system with all the numbers. We already have a full combat log in the game. Uh, I'm clicking over to it right now. Uh, so it's got full combat log with all the details of everything that's hitting you and everything we're doing. We want to be really open with that because that ties into our openness with when it comes to like the add-on system. We already have uh, people in beta who've built uh, damage meters and other types of normal add-ons that you see, threat meters and all that. We're going to be very open with that because we really like the theory crafting community and we want to be able to support them. Oh, nice, nice. Um, Queen Vu also asks, um, what else does Wildstar visually offer that cannot be experienced in cartoons or animes or in other games with similar visuals? Well, I mean, cartoons and animes are not interactive experiences. I mean, they're great storytelling experiences, and it's really fun to watch them. But it's very different to be a part of that world and to be able to be act have an active character and an active presence in that world. And so from the moment you step onto the planet Nexus, it's just this experience from start to finish of what happened on planet Nexus, what is this mystery that's going on here, where did the Elden go, why is all this technology just going crazy all over the place. Uh, we want that to just be something that you have a personal connection with. With, instead of just watching it happen on screen. All right, all right, all right. So this is a big one. Um, Bo uh, how's he say? Boone, Boone's as like B O O N E Z asked. What made you decide to go with a play to play, pay to play business model, while free to play is trending? I think there's a, there's a place in the market for both of those. I mean, I can't really speak to the business decisions because it's not that's way above my pay grade. Um, but both of those models are seeing success out in the world. Both of those models have their place and their time. And the thing about doing a uh, subscription model means that we have to work hard to earn your subscription. And we want to be able to do that. We want to be able to earn someone's subscription by saying to them, like, here's the content you're going to be getting constantly. Here's You know that when you're paying for a subscription that you're getting something every month, that you're going to have something that's worthwhile to play month after month. Because if you don't, you'll unsubscribe and then we'll be in trouble. Do they currently allow players to change their path? And if they don't, will there be plans to allow it in the future? Paths can't be changed because paths are more of your play style. They are what, what type of player you are. And so we want you to make your choice at character creation and then play through that content. And it's also a way to encourage players to group up because you can do other path content if you're grouping up with other players of a different path. So I'm going to choose, like, I'm playing right now as a scientist because I like unlocking lore. I I'm, like finding all these hidden secrets and learning more about the creatures that I'm killing as fast as possible. Um, but another player who likes to explore, you know, they're going to go through those missions and we can work together to do both of our missions and both get rewarded for it. But we want you to, we want you to have a reason to choose the path and to stick with that path all the way through. If you don't like it, you can always, you know, you, you'll know pretty quickly because you get introduced to that path pretty early on. And so you'll know within the first couple levels if that's right for you or not. And you can just go recreate a character. But later on in the game, you'll already have been pretty set far down that path. Just like you don't change your class up halfway through the game. If you really don't like your class, then your only option is to recreate because we're not going to, we don't want to, we want to, you to have meaningful choices when you're creating your character that you can stick with as you're playing. All right. Um, is there going to be some sort of PvP-related path in the works? 
Yeah, but you said uh, a, a path? A PvP-related path. Not a path, no. The paths are a completely optional part of the game, and we don't want them to be a required part of the game. And so if, if you make a PvP path, then suddenly everyone who wants to PvP has to choose that path. And that is definitely what we want to stay away from. We want paths to be totally optional, totally separate from the rest of the game. Just something that you can do because you enjoy doing it, not because you're required to. With the seller path, um, do they have any mechanics that prevent or at least regulate how much someone can do in the world without crowding everything else? I'm not sure I know what you mean. Um, okay, so so he asked. Um, he's concerned about guilds and bots um, crowding the area, with, and sellers crowding the area with uh, you know with a bunch of quest givers all over the place. And oh, stuff like that. I gotcha. Um, so there's a limited amount of stuff that you can build in any town or in any outpost. There's only you know maybe three or four options at each place, and so when if all four of those things are built up, they're there and they're running off a timer, and so they'll decay over time. And so when other sellers come in. If that stuff is already there, they can contribute and add time to the timer. But it's not like you'll be seeing like a billion different. Uh, it's not like you'll be seeing a billion different NPCs just because you have a hundred settlers standing there. There's still only going to be the same four NPCs, but everyone will be contributing to keep that NPC up and running. Players filled out uh, questionnaires and surveys, including like sending out Direct X um, information, and they seem to be ignored. That's interesting, because anyone who filled out that survey got invited to beta, so whoever's asking that question uh, definitely missed their beta invite back in the day. Um, the DirectX stuff that we asked for, I mean, we asked for all that info because really right now when we're in beta, our focus is not on making sure everybody gets a chance to play. Our focus is very much on making sure the game works and is stable. And so we were having very, I mean, you can see on the website, we've got very high system specs and very high requirements for beta because we're not, we don't, we're not worried about the low end yet because we haven't worked on the optimization stuff. That wasn't a big focus initially. The big focus initially is like, is the game fun? What systems do we have that need work? Um, you know, what com what's the combat system doing? It, do people enjoy the game? And once we get past that, that's when we can worry about the optimization. I mean, open beta is a time when it's like, okay, now we want everyone to play the game. Closed beta is very, very focused on getting the feedback we need and getting the data we need. And it's, I mean, it's an unfortunate thing, especially I'm a community manager, so I want to make everyone in my community happy. But it's way more important for us to make sure that the game is really solid and really enjoyable so that way when people do get in the game, they have a good time and they enjoy themselves. All right, good, good question, good answer, good answer. That's why I said not good question, good answer. <laughs> okay, so now, now it's time for my personal questions. <laughs> okay, so what was your main inspiration for Wildstar's visuals? Because when I look at the game, it reminds me of all sorts of things. It reminds me of certain console games like Jack and Daxter and Ratchet and Clank and a lot of Saturday, Saturday morning cartoons. But what was the main inspiration? Well, you named uh, you named a bunch of the inspirations for you. I mean, all of our artists come from various places across the industry, and everybody. I mean, I, the distinct art styles we get talked about a lot are Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank, Borderlands, uh, Pixar movies. It, it, we've got a ton of people in the studio who love anime, and so it's it's basically whatever each artist really loved and can pull from that fits the art style. Which is this art style is so variable and so flexible that you just get a ton of stuff that you can work off of. All right, nice. Okay, so I've recently been getting into role playing, and I know you guys are de developing a lot of lore for the game, and I'm well aware that you guys are also a part of the Wildstar roleplay community on Engine, and you guys are giving plenty of feedback to that, feedback to that community. Um, what I would like to know is, are you planning to open a dedicated roleplaying server at some point, and if so, is it going to be PvE or PvP? We're not talking about server types just yet. We're still working those details out. Um, I think it's safe to say that we've got a huge amount of love for the role-playing community. We love their passion and the, the level of detail that they look for in the game is definitely something that we're going to be providing to them. Um, and so we already have a bunch of really great tools in the game to support role players. And that, that's everything from, you know, the housing system as a whole is a really great safe haven for role players to go hang out in with each other. But also we've got things like role-playing chat, so you can turn on and off in character and out of character speech with different keybinds and different ways to talk so that way any normal player won't see your chat but anyone who's opted in to see role playing chat can see it. We know that role players can go through a lot of you know different stages of griefing with other players who don't really accept 
that they want to play it the way they want to play it. And so we want to make sure that those protections are in to take as much care of them as possible. Is it possible that when a player does something amazing in the world of Wildstar, will you do something special for them to immortalize them in Wildstar history? Like an NPC named after them? Yes. Yeah, or like, like a statue in town of them? Yeah. Yeah, those are definitely things we're discussing that we would love to do. Um, we think recognizing player contribution is a huge part of what makes games successful. Um, it's really cool to be able to walk into a town and see a statue dedicated to some player because they did some awesome thing or found some ridiculous bug in the game or uh, I don't know, who knows. But yeah, that's definitely something we're uh, interested in supporting down the line. Uh, and speaking of uh, lore, um, is the game's future storyline set in stone or will the players be able to shape future storylines through their contributions? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, I don't actually have an answer for that. We've got a story, I mean we've got a set story for launch. Um, I think what we'll be looking for post-launch is what players react to really well and what they, you know, what they like and dislike. And I think because, I mean, we're making the story up ourselves, it's not like we're taking it from some existing story. Um, we have that freedom to do whatever we want with it. If, uh, if people are really reacting well to the, uh, I don't know, the raid bosses or some of the iconic character storylines that we have in the game, then yeah, we'll do more of that and we'll, we'll tell more of that story. It's going to all depend on what people really latch on to because you never really know what, until a game launches, what those like memes are that people are gonna that people are gonna really enjoy. Like right now, we've got people who love the uh, the roused hours, the sheep in our game, and that's just become a running joke. And you never really see that sort of thing coming. It just kind of happens, and so we're gonna wait and see what happens, and then kind of adjust from there. Oh, nice, nice. Um, I'm not sure if this question was uh, answered in previous presentations, but uh, the two characters that represent the Exiles and the Minion uh, faction, you know, the country redhead girl and the snobby British guy. Well, what are their names, and how much of a uh, how important will they be in the story? Um, the Exiles' name. Her name is Kit Brinney, um, and she is definitely in the game. She has some missions in Galaris. Um, I think she has missions somewhere else. Um, and the Dominion guy's name is Malvolio Porteous or Portia. Um, and he is also in the game. All the characters, all the iconic characters we've been showing off, so them uh, from the webcomic, we've done Mondo Zax of the Chua and uh, Victor Lazarin from the Mordesh. They are all in game. They are quest givers. They've got their own storylines um, that you'll go through. And so we want, we're doing that intentionally so that way you get used to these characters and get familiar with these characters. At the end of the Dev Speak videos, you guys are always saying the devs are always listening. So how much of the player feedback um, do you receive on a regular basis? Basis, and how much of those suggestions actually get into the game? I think um, we've got some very good examples of that now. Um, the beta feedback that we've been getting over the last year has been absolutely invaluable to the to the entire development process. Um, I know we, we say that in our videos, but we only say it because it's true, because it's something that we've actually been doing. Um, we, in, uh, in beta, some of the top feedback we got were complaints about the quest system and complaints about the character progression. Uh, the quest system people just felt was kind of stale, and what you're seeing right now, what I'm playing through, is actually the old quest system, so you're seeing like a lot of like kill six of these things, or you know, kill eight of these things, or click on four of these things. And we've actually recently changed that over. We published a dev blog on the website last week. Uh, we've changed it over to be more progression bar based, like percentages. So it now like it'll say kill uh, scar hides, and then it'll go from zero percent to a hundred percent. And at first, that just kind of seems like a visual change, but really, what it is is that now I can mark uh, smaller creatures to give less quest percentages and bigger creatures to give more quest percentages. So a player who thinks they're all badass and can take out these giant bosses can go do it and get more quest progress for killing that one guy. Or some class that loves AoEing all these enemies down can go grab like six tiny ones and kill them and get, you know, a little bit of quest progress for each, but because they're killing six at a time, they're progressing that quest really fast. And so, uh... That was all based purely off of beta feedback. That is what players asked for and what they wanted, and we talked about it and we agreed that our, our quest system needed some work. All right, cool, cool. All right, let's wrap this up. When is this game coming out? When are you guys doing the, uh, some more beta tests? And when are you giving out more beta keys? Well, uh, beta is going to start up, I would say, again, by the end of the year, um, I think it's safe to say. And 
and uh, then we'll be, once that beta starts up, uh, we'll be ramping up straight from there all the way through to launch. So we'll be adding more people constantly. We'll be getting as many people in the game as possible. At this point, like, the word is out. People have seen the game. All they want to do is play, and we want to be able to give that to them. We got to make sure our servers are stable, but once we're sure that they are, we're going to put as many people in as we can from now all the way through launch. All right, of course, of course. Can I play? Because I've been signed up for a while now. <laughs> yeah, you can play right now. Go ahead and take over. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, sign up for beta. We're really excited to get everybody in the game, get everybody's hands on the game, watch videos on our website. Keep an eye because we're going to be, uh, we've got two more classes that we haven't talked about yet. And I think uh, we're pretty close to getting ready to start talking about them. So we're going to have a nice uh, build up to those class reveals. Probably this year seems like a safe bet. All right. Well, thank you for your time, man. It was excellent. Of course. All right. This is Mike Dot saying over and out.